My name is Mitchell Hora. I'm a seventh generation farmer and agronomist on a mission to help farmers grow soil health and improve their stewardship of natural resources. Farmers learn best from experience and learning from other farmers. We need to hear about what is working and see it on our neighbor's fields before we take the plunge on our own farms. In the Saginaw Valley area of Michigan, groups of farmers are banding together in peer groups to learn and experiment to improve the health of not only their soils, but ultimately of the Saginaw Bay. I'm not opposed to necessarily spending money on places we need to, but on some of these, there's some pretty cheap things that we can, we can do to go a long way towards getting there. And then you got money to spend on some other things that probably do take some larger capital investments. My name's Tim Boring. I'm sixth generation on the farm here. I started running the farm in 2012 and we've started implementing then greater diversity, really a kind of a push in soil health sorts of practices. And I think for most who've kind of gone down this path, it's a process. You get into it a little bit and then it just takes you into different places. How are we building something that, that is responding to the forces that we see at play today, increasingly volatile commodity markets, environmental impact awareness that might not have been the case in the past, and just changing weather. I think those need to be the factors the farms are thinking about of how we're positioning ourselves long-term. How do you think about water quality and managing you know, for our nutrient management as a more holistic approach to your farm, your profits, but also to water. Absolutely. Water is the transport mechanism for all these nutrient issues we've got in Michigan. Yep. And we're on light textured soils. And so I wanna, for, for any number of reasons, to protect water quality, to maximize my farm's profitability and, and potential, I wanna keep water on the farm. So a lot of my focus has kind of evolved into a, an aspect of maximizing soil biology so that we're cycling nutrients, we're not putting nutrients on the surface of the ground, we're, we're getting them in where they can be most impactful, and retaining as much water as possible into the system, right? So building carbon, building soil organic matter. Moving towards a system where we're doing a little bit better job of placing nitrogen closer to the row. It is on the surface, uh, which is a trade-off there. Uh, but we're faster, we're more efficient. Uh, we still have variable rate technology onto this, but this was a kind of a case of making do with what you got. So it's a situation where we replumbed the sprayer from 20 inch down to 15 inches. Um, we just got some drops and some Ys on here, uh, orifices into uh, the actual splitters down, down here. In right here, there's... We're actually running an individual orifice on each side, and that was a thing that we learned early on too. Uh, it's important to have that orifice right at the point of, of delivery, because otherwise you're gonna get, it's gonna favor one side to the next. So within a twin row system like this, um, we basically have 22 inch rows in between the gap. This does a good job of shooting that nitrogen and it comes out of here with some force. Yeah. Uh, shoots the nitrogen down uh, close to that plant. Uh, we're covering both sides of the row a little bit. We're getting nitrogen onto the plant. Uh, we're avoiding the cover crop that's already growing into the field and we're covering acres pretty quickly with the system like this. Jeremiah Asher, um, I'm the Assistant Director at the Institute of Water Research at Michigan State University. We know that producers are, they're like researchers in a sense. You know, they're always experimenting on their fields, trying to get the most yield out of their, their fields uh, at the lowest cost, and so they're, they're trying different things on different fields. It's a, a continually, you know, evolving challenge to try to make your, your farm more sustainable. We have dry years and wet years, and those are just lots of challenges. And since farmers are working directly in that space always, um, we feel that this network has the ability to really leverage a lot of that information that, that may not be you know, documented in other places, but farmers are doing those things and they're testing out stuff. And if they can come together and share that information with each other, there's, there's the catalyst for uh, more experimentation of ways to you know, improve yields, reduce sediment loss, uh, try conservation practices in their landscape. And we really think that that, that can uh, provide a significant benefit to the, the watershed's health overall. I think some of it is farmers being thoughtful and honest with themselves about like what are, how do you want your farm to be plugging into your local community and, and the broader region in terms of economics, environmental and social aspects, right? And I do see a positive uh, move towards that. And I see more farms interested in those sorts of things. And the idea of farms working on that together, right? These farmer-led uh, watershed groups, I think are really important of, of building up some of that social cohesion be between farmers 
being able to do this te technical information exchange, but but having some of that, so, that, that support network then too, um, to normalize some of these practices that, that have a, an eye on improving you know, environmental factors outside of just the farm too are really important. Farmers continue to learn from each other and farmers in the Saginaw Valley are helping one another to improve their soil health and improve the bay's health. From farmer to farmer, it's the bay way.